Hey folks, welcome to Between Awesome and Disaster. This is your host, Will Carey. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you being here as always. Uh, it is late uh, in the evening uh, in August here in New York City. Fall is beginning to creep in, and not just because uh, the pumpkin, skies, pumpkin spice latte and cold brew coffee are coming back a bit prematurely, but uh, it has been in the 70s uh, and 60s the past couple of days which uh, has been has been pretty uh, a welcome reprieve from the blistering heat of uh, this past summer. This has been one of the like I feel like since, since from July till about a week ago in August, I was just literally always covered in a thin film of sweat. I've been in Bangkok, Thailand. I've been and I've I've traveled in like Malaysia. I've been in some pretty humid places, and I was more comfortable there than I was <laughs> in New York the past couple of, of weeks. But um, on because segueing ever so seamlessly uh, on the concept, on the, on the uh, idea of travel, because uh, that is, is pretty paramount to today's episode. Uh, on the show today, uh, comedian and uh, illustrator Alex Rio is my guest on uh, today's show. We recorded this a while back, and me and Alex just had a really great chat about comedy and about creativity and he had recently uh traveled to japan and if you have listened to the show recently or ever at all you'll you'll hear me talk about the times i've traveled to japan as being some of my favorite times uh traveling internationally um and you've heard me talk about like and may i like and et cetera, et cetera. but it's just it is it, it's familiar enough my and also different enough and it has a lot of things that i really enjoy that being being in japan for the the first time was it was calming and eye-opening at the same time and and i think about it a lot and if you listen to my uh, interview with tim from alistair when he talks about uh touring in japan that's the kind of experience i'm i'm hoping for and i, I hope i don't know how i'm gonna get this podcast big in Japan, but I would love to be the first English language podcaster that becomes super big in Japan. If I, if I need to somehow adapt my like NPR, like low key, uh, radio style kind of voice to the concept of like a big, loud, colorful Japanese game show. I don't know how I'm going to translate that audio wise, but I think it could work. But, um, me and Alex, uh, talk a lot about, uh, our time in J- to our, our time, I- individual times traveling in Japan. And we had a really great chat. And uh, I'm excited to share it with you guys. If you enjoy this show and you think you know someone who might like it as well, uh, please feel free to let them know. We are on uh, everywhere you get your podcast, but Apple, Stitcher, and Spotify. If um, this is something else I'll, I'll, I'll do here. If you, if you haven't yet, if you're able to take a second to leave a review of the show uh, and a rating on Apple Podcasts, uh, I would really appreciate it if you could do that because those are that that's something that helps build the organic reach of the show. I know that's super douchebaggy kind of marketing jargon I'm speaking, but you guys are my biggest help in, in getting other people to hear this show. And the more people that hear it, the more I can uh, attract the kind of like other, other guests and like get and get certain people to, to want to talk to me. (laughs) Um, But you guys are, I'm really thankful that you guys uh, tune in and listen to the show. And even if I don't hear from you guys, if you guys feel free to shoot me a message uh, at com- at Comic Will Carry on Twitter, I'm pretty easy to find. And we, uh, the Patreon has uh, had a good initial launch, and uh, I'm doing some really interesting exclusive stuff over there. So you can check out Patreon.com/slash Awesome Disaster uh, for more stuff over there. And uh, let's go to my chat with comedian Alex Ryu. <laughs> I had heard the atmosphere at, uh, at Japanese sporting events is super festive, so I was excited to see that, and it did not disappoint. It was really fun. Do they get loud? They get real loud, and all really? the cha- all the chanting is coordinated, and it changes on a dime. And there's big flags and drums. Yeah. It's it's like they they they've taken the like they've probably looked at like European atmosphere, European soccer leagues, and South American soccer leagues, and they are emulating that atmosphere, uh, but in like it. an organized way. Yeah. 
Like, uh, I've never watched a soccer game in Asia, but like, uh, I watch a lot of fights Mm -hmm. and the, for a long time, it might be different now, but for a long time, the, the audience was, it's very different from the U S where we're all like screaming, like, yeah, Mm -hmm. fucking kill them. They're like, clap. (laughs) Exactly. Nice, nice, nice knockout. Good Mm -hmm. submission. (laughs) Yeah. I hear, I think that's what perfect. I, I think professional wrestling is like that. They, uh, the audience is very like, ah, that's good. Well done. A lot more clapping. Yeah, it's like an, a, a respectful t- admiration of the technique instead of a, a license to is, yeah. become primal. Yeah, because everything is so like precise and everything is about like the skill and how uh, how good you could do things. I don't know. That's my that was my impression of Japan when I was in Tokyo and yeah, y- yeah you were there. You were there recently. Uh, so you were in Tokyo and where else? Uh, Tokyo and Kyoto. Ah, cool. Tokyo, yeah, those are the main places. Spent about a week in Tokyo and a week in Kyoto, and then just traveled around from there. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was really interesting. That was really cool. Um, we took the the bullet train mm-hmm. down to Kyoto, so that was that was an experience. That was crazy. Uh huh. Yeah, like it, uh, it goes like, phew, it's yeah, just there, I think like it was super like fast. three hours, maybe a little over three hours from Tokyo to Kyoto. Wow. And like <laughs> we were looking into other options, is like there was that. And then there's also a bus you could take, but the bus takes like eight or nine hours. So mm-hmm. it was like, oh, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, yeah, the, do the yeah. bullet train. <laughs> like we couldn't Absolutely. burn away. Yeah. Yeah. But. Yeah. How, how is Kyoto? What How's the vibe like there? Tokyo, I Tokyo, I felt like very comfortable in because it felt comparable to New York. Kind yeah, of like a to- busy Yeah. City. Tokyo was very much like I felt very much like it was like just a bizarro world New York Mm-hmm. where you know things were just cleaner <laughs> and then like you know yeah and quieter believe and it qu- yeah quieter and uh, everything just worked perfectly mm-hmm. is my surprise it was like it was weird kind of uh, i was still in like new york mode but then you would do things where um like taking the subway right mm-hmm. like um like in new york when you have to go somewhere on the subway there's like a part of my brain that's like ah oh, damn it you know, public transportation. I don't know if I want to deal with this right now. Mm-hmm. But then over there, it, everything works so smoothly. Yep. Like I would initially have that thought. I was like, oh, we got to make a transfer here. But then once you get in the subway, it's like, oh, we, it's coming in 30 seconds as it should. <laughs> and then it's like everything yeah. is just perfect and seamless. And yeah, I was amazed. Yeah. And you can buy a soda from a vending machine that's on the platform with your subway card. Yeah. That was amazing. Dude, and that also blew my mind. <laughs> and and also you can buy a soda machine, but there's no trash on the platform at yeah. all. Well, you're it's it's frowned upon. I learned that it's frowned upon to walk around with like an open beverage or any kind of food or anything like that, mm-hmm. like in Japan in general. So like I was looking around. My wife told me this. And I was looking around and nobody walks around with their food. They just like eat it on the, they buy it, they eat it on the spot and throw it away right there. Mm-hmm. Or else, and like, you know, me, I was dumb. I'm just like, carrying like handfuls of trash everywhere I went because there's no trash cans either. Yep. That was the other thing. That, uh, yeah. Yeah. I had heard that after the, the sarin gas attacks, they got rid of all the trash cans in oh, Tokyo. Cool. That, I, I, I have no idea if those are actually related or not, but that's just what I had huh. heard. Um, the other, the other thing I, I kind of felt, and, and I don't know if, if you experienced this, but Japan, I feel overall is kind of a polite society. So no one was like running up to me because I'm so tall, Mm. but I definitely caught people like sneaking pictures of me. Oh yeah. 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 Me, not so much because of uh, how I look. Of course. But more of, (laughs) I was there with my family. Uh Uh, My, my wife is white. Right. And uh, my kid is half white. So like when we were all together, like, yeah, definitely. It wasn't a common sight, I guess. So mm-hmm. and especially since we just we were talking or speaking in English to each other. Sure. So like, yeah, you get a lot of like eyeballs on you and some people are trying to like sneak pictures, and, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it was it, it was interesting. Yeah. yeah. And is Kyoto like, do you feel like Kyoto compared to Tokyo is kind of like a chiller vibe? I think so. It was a little quieter. Yeah. A little quieter. Um, everything shuts down a little earlier. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, I don't. Yeah, but yeah. there's um, it's. I it felt more like uh, there were more historic things around Kyoto. Yeah, like we we visited like, I, I don't even know how many different temples and shrines and things like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. just all over the place. It was it was really cool. It was real chill. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I I find I I I desperately don't want to be like one of those like white people that's super into Buddhism or like eight. 
Eastern <laughs> religions. But, you know, going and, vis- going and visiting, like, t- temples in, in Japan, I find very relaxed. I found very relaxing. Yeah. The same way, like, uh, I was in um, India and Nepal uh, back in March, and uh, the Holy Festival was being celebrated while we were in Nepal. Are you familiar with that? I am not familiar. It's called the Festival of Colors. It's basically like the the reset for for the year, and everyone buys colorful bags of powder and smears colorful powder I've all over seen their faces. Those pictures, yes. And they throw it in the air and they yeah. smear it on strangers. Like they wouldn't do it. They'd ask. They ask yeah, first, yeah. but I. So my fiance and I were on this group tour and with a bunch, we're the old youngest people on this tour by like 30 years. And we were just like, I, I was like, people were coming up and I was like, get me, come on and taking my glasses off. Like, come on, get, get. And yeah, it, yeah. it was, I had never felt like more, my spirit had never felt lighter than, than those kinds of moments. Yeah, I've seen pictures of that. I didn't know what that was called or what it was, but yeah, it looks, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. It's just so colorful and just people just go nuts with colorful powder. Oh Yeah. It's 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 a it's a wonderful time. If you if you ever are planning, if you ever want to think are thinking about going to India or that that oh, area, definitely am. Definitely yeah. coordinate it during that time. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, apparently, yeah. I thought like India would have been very popular for tourism because of Eat, Pray, Love, but apparently they don't get a lot of uh of vers- people are visitors. Scared. People are scared because people is still, like me too. Like people um, from here going over, they're always like, oh, the water, and you're gonna get sick, and I think like. It just scares people. It scares me. I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, most restaurants do use filtered water. And my, my travel philosophy is is always, I've had diarrhea before. I will have diarrhea again in America. Right, right. And so, that's like the least of like the bad illnesses. You just have to sit on the toilet for a little bit. Yeah. And then you feel better. Yeah. yeah. You just, yeah, you just make, make it work. Yeah. It's part, part, yeah. of the, part of the gig. <laughs> have you traveled uh, to a lot of other places? Not really. I haven't. I'm not a huge... Uh, like until I, I got married, like my wife is huge on traveling. She travels everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, and until we got together, I, I never really traveled too much, not even outside the country. Um, last year we were in Iceland. That was oh, awesome. Cool. That was a cool experience. Um, and that was cool for a different reason because it's just unlike anything that you see in a city. Yeah. There is just not, it's just all like this crazy nature with like uh-huh. waterfalls all over the place. And you feel like you're in weird, like, driving through a movie set uh-huh. that just goes on forever. Yeah, it's, oh, that's, that's it was, cool. It was pretty wild. Yeah. That's awesome. I would, I'd always, I've always wanted to, to go to Iceland. That's, that's definitely on my, on my list. Oh, definitely at some recommend point. it. Yeah. yeah. I want to, I want to go there and I would love to go to like, a, there's a bunch of other uh, South Asian, S- Southeast Asia countries. Yeah, I Southeast hit Asia up. sounds awesome. Like Kim, like Cambodia, Cambodia, Philippines, like Laos, all those po- mm-hmm. places. Yeah. Um, so, where where did you grow up? You say you didn't didn't travel too much. Did you ever think you were going to when when you were younger, or was um, that sort of always just like a dream? I, yeah, I think it was all always kind of more like a dream. Like mm-hmm. everything was like all the travel destinations were all like big bucket list destinations. You know, like Japan, sure. and Iceland, and it was like it just seemed so far out there. Mm-hmm. And like um, my family, we didn't go on too many big vacations. We went to like Korea a couple times. Um, that's where my family's from, right? And, um, yeah, but like everywhere else we didn't really, yeah, we didn't do too many big family vacations because uh-huh. like my, both parents were working all the time and, you know, totally kind of things. Yeah. What did, what did your folks do? My mom was a office manager for a shipping company for a while. This is in Dallas, uh, where I spent most of my adolescence. Okay. And, um, my dad was a chiropractor, maybe still is, I'm not sure. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not too, I'm not too close to my dad. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I'm kind of the same way with my dad. Like we, we, like you know, he loves me. I love, I love him. But we're we're at the point because we, you know, we're starting to repair some stuff. But we're just ah, like, hey, nice. how's it going? Uh, oh, yeah. okay, cool. We, we we're because because again, we I tend to become a more stereotypical, emotionally shut down man around him. But mm, yeah, I think it's the same with me. It might be, uh, yeah, it might be just like the the male ego. Thing. Yeah, you know, it's like you know, two adult guys. Now I don't know. I don't know how. It, I haven't seen my dad in so long. I don't know how I'd act. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. and 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 they they're and they're originally from Korea. Or oh uh, yeah they're, yeah they're, they're originally from Korea. My mom moved here in high school, and my dad came in college. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, and then they were just mm-hmm. from like Seoul or from like uh, rural. Like I th- I'm not sure. 
I want to say gotcha. Seoul. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only. That's the only city. I. That's the only city I know. In, yeah, that's like the biggest city. So I want to say yeah. Yeah. But, I, I didn't know this. Apparently, apparently, South Korea is the country that listens to the most podcasts. Really? Yeah. Like only 33% of a, the American population has listened to a podcast in last month, but it's 58% in South Korea. 58% of their population listens to podcasts. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. I thought that, I thought that was pretty cool. Apparently, huh. th- apparently, they also have the fastest internet in the world. Apparently, they drink the most. Oh, yeah. Korean people drink a lot. That's, I don't. Like, yeah, I can't. I can't control my liquor. I I can't either. <laughs> I have an I have an Irish sounding last name, and I I'm three drinks and I'm taking a nap. Yeah, you're so, you're like so big. And <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah, you, like, you, you look like a guy. Or, like you'd walk into a bar and everyone would just challenge you to a drinking contest. Yeah, but I got I have no tolerance whatsoever. My that fiance, my fiance can drink though. She's had to she she has like a history of working in politics, so they go hard. Yeah. You know, you're working on a campaign 17 hours a day and then you're yeah. just like, you know what? I need a drink now. <laughs> yeah. I think it's, um, I think it's a big cultural thing too in Korea and in Japan too. That's another thing. Did you see like the drunk people in Japan when you were there? Uh huh. Like the drunk businessmen just like passed mm-hmm. out on the street. Yep. That's like totally commonplace and like, I guess borderline acceptable <laughs> over there uh-huh. to just see like a guy in a suit with his briefcase just like passed out on the side of the street somewhere. Because mm-hmm. he was just too tired to get home that day. Yeah. But I think, like, yeah, it's 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 part of the culture where you have to drink with your coworkers and just get completely shit faced. Yeah, guess, that's you know? part of the the of the like socialization. Like, yeah, I, yeah, and that it makes total sense why they sell dress shirts at at convenience stores. Yeah. <laughs> like at Seven Eleven or Family do Mart. They? Yeah, they do. Oh, Family Mart was a shit. I f- oh fucking Family Mart is amazing. <laughs> Dude. It's the greatest yeah. convenience store yeah, in the world. The Family Chicky? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh I, lo- I I go hard for Family Mart. Oh, I love man. that place. Every time I see one, I'm just, just so that happy. The, that was the part of uh, my Japan trip where I, I felt the... I felt a little weird being that way because I would uh-huh. seek out the fa- every time I'd see a family member, I was like, oh, I want to get a piece of fried chicken over there. <laughs> like it's like 125, 125 yen, which mm-hmm. is like a dollar yeah. for fried chicken. And it was so good. Yeah. It, yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Or um, one family mart I, I was at in, in Taiwan had like the like snack sweet potatoes or the, these uh, these really tasty uh, like they're almost like white grape flavored Mentos. Oh, but wow. they're softer. And that was the first time I'd ever seen a orange Coke. Orange Coke. Orange Coke. There's orange vanilla Coke now, but they had or they have orange Coke in uh, it's Japan. It's not like Fanta. No, it's, it's like not like Fanta. It's Coca Cola. It's Coca Cola, brown. Co- it's br- liquids brown, hint of orange flavor. It's quite nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I, Sounds weird. <laughs> yeah, because I don't drink so much, I'm yeah. always paying attention to the soda where wherever. I, yeah, yeah. I, where wherever yeah. I travel. Oh, dude, this is... I never thought I'd get to talk about Family Mart. Yeah, <laughs> this dude, is so great. Was, I think that was like um, the defining... That's what kind of defined the the food experience in Japan. Because like, like, you know, we're from New York. So yeah. I felt like I like we had... I've had really good food here in New York. And I think like pound for pound, New York probably has the best food in the world. Mm-hmm. So it's hard to go some, anywhere and be like, oh my God, this was so impressed uh, like i found it hard to be impressed by the food they had the really good food but then like yeah when you like take it down a level to like where the how how do the the shitty foods compare mm-hmm. right like we have our dollar slices and they have their family like their convenience their convenient food um store food just like blows ours out of the water 100 percent. it was just amazing i was like oh man i could just go here every day yeah you go to the basement of a shopping mall and you're just like oh my dude god those were insane yeah where it's just like an entire floor just full of like pastries and yeah full of pastries and anything. like takeaway katsudan yeah. and oh it's ama- oh amazing God. dude i i'm just yeah the, the the like casual like the casual like grab and go food is just on point yeah. they, they they've got it they've got it dialed in it's so good I, one thing i thought was so interesting about japan um is that i found it hard i i never ate healthy there mm-hmm like I ate just like a shit ton, ton of like pastries, noodles, and just salty chicken and fried stuff. Uh huh. And uh, and like you know like they're one of the healthiest nations in the world, right? Like mm-hmm. like people live for a very long time over there. And I like about a week in, I was eating so much crap. I was like, oh, I kind of want a salad. You can't just find a salad. No, nope. like you do. <laughs> like you do here. Like I was like, oh man, you can't find a salad. You can't even find fruit. That's like, yeah, just like for, all the time. Like you can find it, but it's, 
Yeah, it's not as ubiquitous. Yeah, exactly. Like I would go into yeah. grocery stores and they wouldn't just have like a fresh produce and fruit section like I would imagine. I mean, mm-hmm. I didn't go to every store, but yeah. Yeah, I know. I, I know what you're what you're talking about. Yeah. The talking about the 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 drunk businessman thing. Like if if there's like one sort of like like lost in translation cultural kind of fantasy I have, it's to ingratiate myself with a group of salary men and just party all night. Yeah. That I think yeah, that probably go nuts. That would be fun. Yeah. Um and then so so Dallas, how did you like uh growing up there? I I've been to Austin, so I don't know what Texas is like. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um I've I think I've spent the least amount of, of time in Austin of all the cities that I've been to in Texas. But uh, Dallas is nice. Dallas mm-hmm. is nice. I, I liked it. Um, I think most, I don't know, like living in New York, I think uh, people have a weird view of Texas in general. Mm-hmm. Texas, that's not Austin you know, in yeah. general. So it's like, uh, some. but yeah, Dallas is fun. You know, it, you know it's, it's like any other big city, really. There's a lot, you know. If yeah. you're a sports fan, you'll have a lot of fun there. Oh, yeah. 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 Good, good food. Cowboys, yeah. FC Dallas. Yeah, uh, FC have, Dallas. Have a really good, uh, really good uh, fan base. Um, I think there's a comedy club in Dallas, yeah? Yeah, there's a few. There's like Addison Improv, and then that's like, I think that's a big one, right? Yeah, I think that so. That was the big one when I was there. I wasn't doing comedy when I was in Dallas, but mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. So so you're so you're growing up in so you're growing up in Dallas and this this is something I like I I, I like to ask. Uh what kind of cuz I was definitely like the theater geek archetype mm-hmm. for for when I when I got to high school. Uh who were you in high school? I was an artist. You were an artist. Yeah, I drew. Yeah, I drew drawing and painting. That's what I do now. I'm an illustrator. Oh, awesome. Yeah. That's that's so cool. Who were who were your uh who are you, some of your favorite visual artists? Like, uh, like of, oh, I'm I'm so sorry like, to keep interrupting, but like, what was what somebody that like really blew your mind when you first saw their work? Um, I don't know. Uh, I guess I mean like just like the obvious like Picasso, Matisse, uh-huh. uh, like that's that's kind of what I like kind of like learned on when I was mm-hmm. uh, like first introduced to art. So those guys were always like huge influences, and then like uh, around. 17 16 17 i started really getting into comic books and uh-huh. and that's when i um i discovered guys like uh like alex toth jordy bernay Th- mm-hmm. these are more like old school like black and white guys and i just oh, like, yeah. like hugo pratt i don't know if you know of him i don't think so yeah yeah they're like yeah i really fell in love with that stuff and uh yeah and it's, that's that's yeah. awesome i i, I, I love manga. I love black and white illustrations. Like yeah. I, my favorite manga is all in black and white, and there's just something about the con- the contrasts of 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 the white page against the black of the ink. I just find so yeah, visually yeah. appealing. Yeah, it's really it's 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 different. It's like uh, you see a different perspective. You, you get a different uh, sense of the work when you take the color off of it. And mm-hmm. like, um, yeah, it's. It's, uh, <laughs> that's great yeah. so so that was so that was like your first uh that was your like first creative outlet yeah was yeah. was vi- was visual art yeah that's that's basically who i was in high school yeah uh-huh it's just i'm i'm yeah. pic- i'm i'm picture i'm i'm seeing it now we would have been friends in high school yeah i think, I think we would have yeah because <laughs> yeah. i was because i was the kid who was like dying his hair and i you know oh, yeah. i played i was in the i was in this place skateboard uh i didn't skateboard i mountain biked oh, okay um, and you know, I started playing guitar and I and I played bass. Yeah. So I would I would be like, Hey, hey, Alex, can you do can you do a logo for my band ZP? Yeah, that, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's who I would have. Been. That's who yeah, I would have yeah, been. yeah. There's uh, a lot of that. Yeah. yeah, I there's there's just something to like that's and that's good because that's about around the time I found like my thing also like sophomore year of high school because I was lost uh, up until then. Like I didn't uh, know what what I was gonna do. I didn't have I didn't have the thing that I was like super excited to work hard on and for long hours and be exhausted after and feel happy. And then right. theater was, it was that thing. So, so for you, it was visual art and yeah, visual art. Uh-huh. Cause I was, I was real like, um, I mean, I was real outgoing with my friends, but like at that time it's like being on stage doing like the, that was like, nah, I, was, I just behind the scenes, let me draw and show you my picture. Uh-huh. And yeah. That was it. Yeah. So, yeah. That's awesome, man. That's kind of how I feel with with this because I have a very like, 
I want attention for certain things or I want no attention at all and right. I want to blend in. Yeah. So this is sort of my most way. Most creative of, types are like that in yeah. some way. Or, yeah. yeah. That's why I think like like podcasting and, and visual art, I feel there's some similarities because you can be behind the scenes and the center of attention. Like like you, you can do a good piece and it can be hanging somewhere and someone go, oh, yes, this is excellent use of dy- dynamic foresha. I don't right. know our terms. Um, <laughs> And then you're just off going right. like, yeah, I yeah. did that. And then the same way, like I can like look at, oh, people are listening to this, like, ah, oh, oh yeah, my li- my listeners in Tanzania picked us picked up this episode. Well done, good, good. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I just I, I love that that global aspect of it. Like I feel like I feel like whenever I turn on the news, people use the word globalist as like a negative thing, but I know they're using it a very specific way. But the idea of like. Like, cause I, I never thought I was going to like leave my hometown and right. then, and then to the, the fact that I've been fortunate enough to get to travel as much as, as much as I have. Your I hometown just, is where? Uh, I am from Southern Maryland. I'm from oh, okay. about an hour and about an hour and a half, uh, South of DC. I'm from, uh, uh, St. Leonard, Maryland, Pop- yeah. 800 people. It's very, oh. very small. Uh, the, f- f- this is a fun thing, joke I do whenever I call my mom, I, cause the route two and four cut goes through my, that's the route, the road I take to get to my mom's house. Mm. And that turns into Pennsylvania Avenue if you stay on it. So I like to call my mom and go, mom, can you stop your neighbor, please? <laughs> I, he's really bumming me out <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or back when Obama was president, I'd be like, mom, your neighbor is so cool. <laughs> um, that's did funny. you, yeah. Did you, did you go to, did you go to college in Texas or did you? Oh, I um, went to college here. That's how I ended up, Back in New- I was actually born in New York City. And really? Soon after I was born, my parents moved out to California, and uh, I lived there till in like Orange County till I was about ten. I moved oh, to Texas. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, and then gotcha, gotcha. Came back here, and then yeah. So you're kind of bi coast. You've kind of you've yeah, it kind of makes East weird, Coast, like, West Coast, this Sen- upside down triangle. Thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How is how is Orange County? I hear Orange County is kind of like the 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 like Republican stronghold of California. Is it? That's what I've heard. I have, heard, no, I've, I have no idea. I've heard. Yeah. I've heard. I've heard Bakersfield's a little, uh, little rednecky. Could be wrong. Uh, but. Well, Bakersfield's far away from uh-huh. where um, I was living. I think that was a few hours away. Yeah, uh, I lived in a. My fa- most of my family is in a city called Irvine. I don't know if I know Irvine. Yeah, they have some comedy clubs there, mm-hmm. and um, uh, I don't know. I don't know if maybe. <laughs> I'm yeah. not a very. <laughs> that uh-huh. kind of thing, yeah. I, I, I've spent a little bit of time in California. I, I like the big, the, you know, obviously the big cities, but there's this sort of like creeping fear of suburban California that it just reminds me of where I grew up. And I'm like, yeah. I could, I could feel like Are you in what way though, just the, uh, the, the, the calm of it, I guess. I think that's what got to me. I you tried, know? I tried moving back out there after a call, like immediately after college. Uh huh. And, um, and I was like, because like I'd been in New York for four years at that point. I was like, all right, I need a break from the city. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go out to California, enjoy some good weather, be back yeah, with my yeah. family. And then it lasted about three months where I was like relaxing. And all of a sudden it just hit. I was like, like, why is, why is everything so slow? You know, yeah. it's like, why, like, why does everything take two hours? It's like, <laughs> it was just, like, everything was starting to annoy me. And I was like, I would be saying that everywhere, like in traffic. I was like, what am I doing? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I have to come back. Mm-hmm. That that I feel that every every time I go to my fiance is hilarious because she's born and raised in Brooklyn, so yeah. she literally can't function in like suburban America for longer than two days. Oh wow, well. she yeah. she starts to get a little restless. That's how my wife is. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, whenever we go back to visit my family, she's like after a couple of days, she just like gets all antsy and like, what are we gonna do? <laughs> uh huh. It's like, what's yeah. what's the plan? I'm like, oh, you know, you just we're doing nothing. Well, well, well a nice what's sofa that here? <laughs> you know, it's just yeah. Yeah, you know my 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 dad uh, my dad's uh, you know he's he's got cable and yeah my stepmom yeah. maybe will accidentally say something kind of anti-Semitic but you know we'll roll with it. <laughs> um, That's funny. Uh, so so you go so so you so you leave Dallas you and you come back to New York mm. and what what year is this approximately? Two thousand three. Two thousand three. Yeah, two thousand three. Okay. Uh, I graduated high school two thousand one. It took a little time off uh, and then. Decided I do want to go to college, mm-hmm. so then came back to New York, went to school, and uh, yeah, cool. And you went for for illustration. Was there yeah for uh, illustration? And yeah. what was the the plan? What I have no idea. What yeah, the plan was at that time. I was <laughs> just like, this is what I'm good at. 
Uh -huh. This is like the only thing I like doing besides video games. And I'm not going to get a job playing video games. So. Yeah. You don't want that. <laughs> yeah. You don't want that job. It's yeah. not a very good job. Do you, did you, I don't, this, this might feel kind of niche. There was like this, there was like a reality show called tester mm. to get a job as a video game tester. Yeah. Oh, that sounds horrible. Um, but that's like yeah. a, a horrible job. Yeah, because we because you know how many bad games there are in the world. Yeah, and you have to play those and, ugh, yeah. Yeah, you you it's have to job. you got to play. You probably won't get to play good games. It's mm. minimum wage or ba not a ton yeah, of money. You can't be unpaid that much. It's, not, it's it's not yeah. a ton of money. And then every time and you're playing a unfinished game, so every time the game breaks, you got to write a report. Yeah. That doesn't uh can't be fun. That doesn't sound like a <laughs> sounds like an over romanticized aspect yeah. of the the industry. Video games like God God bless people who are passionate enough to to program them because yeah, like, that, uh, the yeah, end that's... product the end product is fun, but the get in there sounds like it sucks. It takes, yeah, you hear about like how many years certain games take and it's just like, man, mm -hmm. thank God you're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um I will I will spend sixty dollars on, <laughs> yeah, on this. It's well worth it. Yeah. Um, so okay. So you so you so you graduate college and you you pl the plan is to stay in New York. Uh yeah. I mean after college the plan well initially the plan was to go back to California mm -hmm. and um, that kind of just didn't work out and then, so I came back to New York and yeah that was that was it mm -hmm. came back and stuck I got married had a kid and my wife doesn't want to leave New York so we're here. Uh -huh. Yeah, so that's pre that's pretty lucky. How did uh, how did you meet your wife? Uh, we were both studying Japanese. She was studying Japanese. Uh -huh. so I, I was starting to, and um, I found a language exchange program online that a friend turned me on to, mm -hmm. and she was using that as well. And then, like in the beginning, it's kind of anonymous, but then like it came out somehow that she was in New York City. So uh -huh. I'm like, oh hey, let's uh let's just hang out sometime. And that's kind of how that worked. Oh, that's cute. And then I stopped studying. And, uh huh. Yeah. Okay, so so you can't speak yeah. Japanese? No, I don't speak any Japanese. <laughs> yeah, I'm horrible. I'm I'm yeah. kind of the same. I know a couple of phrases and and things I've picked up from anime, but that's about all I got. Yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat. Like mm -hmm. the only reason I wanted to learn um, was because uh, it's it's one of my uh, big dreams to have a comic book out in Asia, in Japan, in Korea. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, I might as well like you know. I'll try to learn some Japanese. Maybe I could, you know, figure something out and, you know, print a book in Japanese. That'd yeah. be kind of cool. That would you know, be cool. Because there's a big comic book culture over there. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Do, oh my God. Okay. <laughs> All right. We're, I'm going to, I'm going to, going to nerd out again. So in Tokyo, there's a place called the Mandrake complex in Akibara. Uh, -huh. uh, that, um, and I think you might, I can't remember if you tweeted this or if someone else did, but, um, something about like, if you're lost in Tokyo, don't ask the white person cause they know where to, they're, they're going oh, there yeah. also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think I chimed in. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> so there's this really, there's this like eight floor, like, uh, anime, uh, video game complex called man, Mandrake in, uh, Akibara. So I went in there, went up to the eighth floor and, it's just a treasure trove. I bought like so ma so many manga because I'm a big uh, fan of Sword Art Online. Yeah, which is this franchise that you people either love or I'm apparently gay for liking, yeah. <laughs> according to the internet. Um, uh, so I just went up to the counter and said Sword Art Online. He's like, and he points it out to me, and I bought like a stack of stuff that's like never going to get translated to English because it's like the kind How do you of read fun it? How do I read it? Yeah. Uh, well, what I I mostly just I I mostly just read it for the artwork. And, okay, you can read by looking at the artwork. Yeah, and, and I try to kind of piece yeah. things piece out things that are going together. And I tried doing this. Uh, I took a picture of the page with uh, and then tried to run it through Google the Translate. Google Translate? Did that work? Uh, not really. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> a, cu a, a couple of pages worked decently, but I mostly am just like what at it for the for the artwork. Yeah. Um, but like I got a big stack and they're like, they're like the equivalent of like $3 each. Whereas in America, they'd be like 14. Yeah. Those, those, uh, those manga comic books that like, if you go to uh, Kino Kuniya or whatever, they're like $14. I know. Yeah, It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Must How'd you even get into that? If you can't read, if they don't translate that into English. Or do they have a series that they translate? Into? There are series that are translated to, to, they translate like the main things that have been like adapted for the anime into yeah. English, but then they have a lot of other stuff that's just kind of either, uh, 
that either hasn't been translated into English yet because it can take a long time <laughs> yeah. to get this stuff released in the in English. Um, oh, very true. And and then there's lots of stuff that I think is a little bit more uh, fan servicey or, yeah. or or silly that's right. like not considered canon. So I was like, ah, I'm a completist. I have like a weird sort of like. OCD where if I start a thing, if I start a thing and I really love it, I got to get all the things. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the same way. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so that place was, was super, super fun. And then, um, the big, um, the big arcade that has the space invader on it. Yeah. Uh, what is it? Uh, it's like, it's like Taito yeah. city or something, something like that. Something like yeah. that. They're like one of the big publishers out in Japan too. Mm-hmm. They, they make a lot of those arcade games. Yeah. And I, de- I definitely had some, some fun there. Uh, super potato, I think is another, yeah, another super place. Potato is like, the famous like retro game spot. Yeah, yeah. I, w- I went there and I played some uh, old school Metal Slug. Nice. <laughs> uh, you know, while people were smoking. <laughs> yeah, dude, people just smoked everywhere. Yeah, it's crazy. And again, it's still so clean. Yeah, I, fe- I feel like there's just no trash anywhere. It's, it's clean to the point where um, I I started realizing like how much uh, like I started like uh, missing how dirty New York was in a, in a weird way. Like I, I re- started realizing like how much trash was a part of me. You know right. I and mean? it's like, this is like a little too creep. It was like creeping me out a little bit. It's like, where's the trash? And right. It's like over, yeah. overly clean. Yeah. 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 I, th- I think if we, if we gave New York city to the, the country of Japan for like a year, it would look so much better. Yeah. But then like, as soon as we came back, we would just destroy everything. I, I agree. <laughs> you know, that, that, that's like, where, that's why I think like whenever people bring up po- like, po- like, you know, laws and stuff that work, that have worked well overseas, I'm just thinking that's a great idea. But like the people who live in the United States, even the people I like yeah. would totally fuck that up. Yeah. People, I mean, cause like you're kind of set in the way that your culture is built in, mm-hmm. on, right? It's like over there, like they they had no trash cans because like, I thought, I think like the idea is that, um, like if there are no trash cans, people weren't, won't like put trash all over the place and right. it works over there. Whereas here it's like, if there's no trash can, people are just going to start throwing things on the floor. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> you know? It's like, yeah. Like look in, look in Brooklyn, like in some of the bad areas that don't have trash cans. It's like, there's just shit all over the place. All over the it's place. crazy. Yeah. 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 It's like, it, like, I feel like it's. Most people I feel are inherently will be respectful of another culture, so they won't throw right. stuff on the floor yeah. when they're traveling or visiting somewhere. But if you inconvenience them where they where they live, I think people will rebel. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I also w- I also think Tokyo subway should take over the MTA, but that's a whole other thing. Yeah. Um, so then, so so you had you were married and had a kid before you were a comedian. Yes. Now, how does that conversation go? Because, <laughs> and here's why I ask this. So, so when my, when my fiance and I, and I met, I had been a comedian for a while uh-huh. and it was a, an adjustment process for me to go from being, going out and doing doing up every single night, being out very late to b- working smarter and not harder. And then also trying to be there for her. Mm. And so, and a couple of my other friends, were were like in in relationships and then became and then started doing comedy and she is always like oh i just I, how do they deal with that so, yeah, yeah. like so i'm i'm curious how did the how did the idea to do stand up come about were you always a fan of stand up or did I was that always, come later i was always a fan of uh comedy uh, i didn't really i didn't know stand up was a thing that you could just do mm-hmm. you know what i mean for a long time right right i thought stand up was <coughs> for celebrities that's what Chris Rock does and uh-huh. Dave Chappelle does. You know, and there's like certain few people that do it. And, then, and like, you know, if you're not one of them, then, you know, what are you doing? Right. I didn't know how it worked. And then one day I found out like, um, you could just go to an open, you can just start doing stand up. I was like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I always like funny things. I like writing jokes. Um, and I think the big thing was that I'm, I've always been a storyteller. I do comic books and I love uh-huh. writing stories. And to me, like stand up and jokes jokes are just like little mini stories you tell people right yeah each joke is just a mini story and you tie them all together and create a bigger story Mm -hmm. that always interested me so that's how i kind of have um got into it like i got the idea to start doing it Uh uh-huh um as far as uh how did that how did that work with me starting after being married and having a kid uh yeah it was weird it was weird because could you imagine it's like um I didn't. I kind of didn't know how to tell. It sounds kind of a, like a stupid thing to say, right? 
Mm-hmm. It's like, hey, I'm uh, I I'm gonna be a comedian now. You know, it just right, sounds like a right. weird. Yeah, I didn't know what to say. I was like, I think I want to try this thing, and I was like, really? Uh huh. Yeah, like, and eh. and yeah, and yeah. and how and how is she? Uh, she was supportive of it. Yeah, she, uh-huh. she yeah, she was like, all right, you can give it a shot. Yeah, yeah. I imagine, I imagine so. Yeah, and she's like, yeah, give it a shot, see how it goes, and um, yeah. So and um, yeah, the whole thing with what you were saying about working smarter, not harder. Mm-hmm. Like I, that was like I was a little older. I was 28 when I started. Uh-huh. This is uh, in 2012, and. So I was already a little older than a lot of the other guys that were doing it. There were some really young guys, like 21, 22. And uh, that was already instilled in me to work smarter, not harder. And, yeah. You know, with a family and all that, trying to figure that out. And um, Yeah. You have to be a little bit more thought-full like the the risk the risk uh reward right right, uh, right. balance becomes because when i was younger i feel like i would put myself through a lot more indignities uh, when it comes to like auditioning through for, for things or you know certain shows yeah. and stuff yeah because you have the time you know, and like you know no one's waiting on you and you know yeah just, yeah it's, it's yeah it's, it's a little different yeah. yeah it's a good problem it's a good problem to have though yeah. because i i definitely you know you know, I, I, the, the idea of like someone like, Oh, when are when are you going to be home is, it, and it's because, Oh, I want to know if we, when I should order or if I should go. Right. Tonight. It's cause they love you. Yeah. <laughs> you have, you have love at home. That's yeah. why. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I think it took a, a long time for me to re- feel worthy of that. Yeah. It, yeah. It, which is fucked up sounding, <laughs> but, but I, it, I, it feels real. Um, yeah. so, and, and so you started, so you started in, in 2012. Yeah. And, um, so I'm trying, I'm trying to think. So I got here in 2009. So the places I was going to, I would, I would go to the Creek. Um, but it was like an hour away from where I, my first apartment, um, the perch cafe in park slope, um, uh, Grand- broad New York comedy club, open mics. Uh, I, re- I remember those. Club. Yeah. There was also Broadway and, uh, the Creek was the first place I did open mic. Oh yeah, I think it was a Thursday. It was May tenth, I believe. Yeah, mm-hmm. May tenth, two thousand twelve, and uh, <laughs> I that was the first place I went to. Um, I went the day before, and just to check it out, mm-hmm. you know, to scope it out to see like what it was going to be like. And then you know, you know the creek. It's, it's I, I do. It's brutal. A, back it, then it was like pretty brutal. It's too. a gr- yeah. oh my god when I when I that, first that started when going we were to up the, the creek. upstairs room. Yeah, yeah. And when I first started going to the creek, it was not the very. It was not the f- kind of the open mics were not as welcoming as they are now. Yeah, now they're super friendly. Yeah, everyone's super nice over there. Yeah, yeah but I think I was just I because I started I got to New York right at the tail point where a lot of. Uh, people we know now in in the comedy scene are we're like just about to like start getting breaks. Right. Like I think Mike Lawrence, Mike did, Lawrence was just yeah. about to get on, just got on TV, yeah. just got Montreal and you know, like Michelle Wolf, Michelle yeah, Wolf, still, yeah. uh, Mike Racine, yeah. uh, Jake Young. I remember I was seeing him a lot. Um, Andy yeah, Hayes. That's, crazy. that's the, that's the craziest thing about stand up. It's like, man, yeah, I, to, made it. <laughs> I know to, like it gives you so much hope. Yeah. Well also to think that, and, and I've said this, I said this to someone else, but to think that, uh, a woman who's like calling my name to do two minutes at the pit open mic is now being personally attacked by the president. That's, dude, it, it just blows your mind, right? Like what? <laughs> yeah, like how do you get to that level? Like, yeah, like, that's not even. <laughs> no, that wasn't in the plan. We're just getting told yeah. jokes on stage. This is yeah, yeah. We were like, we were like, maybe we'll. We were all thinking, oh, maybe we'll do late night or get like an hour, yeah. be able to tour for like a couple years on on that on that special and events like being attacked. By the yeah. <laughs> Personal. That's so like crazy. called out by name. That is the craziest thing. Yeah. yeah. Saying like, you're not, you're not funny. You're part of the problem. Like, holy shit. That's can you, can yeah. you imagine if you woke up tomorrow morning to the president saying, Alex, dude, yeah. You opening suck. your Twitter and just seeing <laughs> that tweet, like, like directly like towards you. That's yeah. so crazy. Oh, I would, I would print it out and get it framed. Uh, dude, that's like the <laughs> ultimate, yeah, that's like the ultimate hater. Yeah, <laughs> that's like one one hundred one hundred percent. It's so crazy. Yeah, um, so I, I so the creek is probably is probably where I, I met you. I'm trying to think some of the some yeah, of the other yeah. other places that we've we've run into each other. We've run into each other a few times. Uh, the creek. I did your show at the creek. Yes, you uh, did. When was that? That was like 
a couple of years ago even. Yeah, it's yeah. been a couple of years now. We, yeah. we we hit two years and then I was just not on the calendar anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it happens. Yeah. But uh, I'm, I don't that. mind. Um, um, yeah, we ran into like, we would run into each other just like sporadically at whatever show or open mic we were mm-hmm. both at or whatever event. And uh, one of the things that I remember, I don't know if you ever remember, we had a conversation like, have you ever been to the cellar yet? To, 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 to like, just to go see a show no i haven't you still haven't been to the cellar i i for like maybe i i think i walked in once but it was sold out yeah um yeah, so. i remember because like one of the conversations when i think this was early on when i was like kind of getting started mm-hmm. uh you'd mentioned that you'd never been and at that time like i'd been like once and i was like oh hey let's go to the cellar and every time i saw you i was like does he still remember that we we said that we should go to this. Oh, yeah. I'm and we sorry, never, we man. never did. No, but like it's, I'm as guilty too. Cause I'm uh-huh. like, oh, well I shouldn't bring it up. Yeah. yeah. Well, but, yeah. If, some night we're free. We can go yeah. to the cellar. I'm, d- I'm, I'm down. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm down. I haven't if seen I'm a show there since forever. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's crazy. It may not like, you since know, like Eagle, started, yeah. Eagle Wit is, is there now. Yeah. And Nick like Cal- Usama's there. Uh, Us- yeah. uh, Usama. Um, I, I just had, had him on. That was a great chat. Um, uh, Nick Callis, I, I I just had did an episode oh, with, he's and there he too, he just got past there. So yeah. that's uh, it's that's pretty cool to see. Yeah, I love seeing that kind of thing. Yeah, it, like it, seeing it, the guys that you kind of like saw at open. Uh-huh. Like, oh man, you guys are you guys are doing shit. Yeah, so it's pretty yeah. It, it's it's pretty in, inspiring. Now, yeah, did yeah. you ever like produce shows or what? what a, I'm I'm trying I'm trying to remember uh, if you not, ever produced a show not, anymore. Not uh, then. Like right now, I'm producing a show with uh, Kosha Nagal. You know uh-huh. Yeah, you yeah know I know Kosha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So me and him are producing a show uh, in the Lower East Side. Uh, oh, nice. And we've been doing that since about December. Cool. But yeah. That's, yeah. Uh-huh. It's, yeah. It's, that's, a, that's a strange animal, the, the producing, it is. It producing is. side yeah. of it. It's the, it's the first time I've been on that side of it, and it's a big learning experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, all that all that pressure of like just oh, I, I hope people uh, <laughs> every hope people show, show you're like, oh man, no one's coming. Yeah, and then I have to explain to these like eight people thinking that they're gonna be on a show. <laughs> like, yeah, that's why. Uh, well, I'm a, gonna, I'm I, I just that stuff doesn't that stuff doesn't bother me because there's like New York is just such that kind of strange animal where like really even like really well-known people, like if you're not, if you don't have a spot at the clubs, like really well-known people don't, yeah, doesn't, weird. doesn't draw yeah. name. It's so, it's so crazy to me. And, and like, you know, Emily Winter is like a producing genius. She's doing, I think she's doing really cool, th- cool things, but I, I just, whatever ingredient, whatever ingredients to, cause when I was running my show, I was like going out and posting flyers all around Long Island city for a couple for a couple of days and I was like sending sending emails even when like uh me and Nasser Khan did a like a co-headlining thing at the at the pit yeah and we got in time time out in New York I didn't mean anything oh really <laughs> yeah that's why I started focusing on on this because uh, I started going on the Mark Marin where I was like okay I started thinking about why do I like stuff and then I, I realized that at least for comedy if I, I like some people that like make me laugh and also I kind of connect to in a way mm-hmm. Uh, that's why I like Marin so much. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's just so natural. It's just like talking to people and like getting them to like kind of just like open up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's yeah. another guy. He had Obama on his podcast. Yeah. That's I think that, that, that I think that was a mo- like one of those podcasting moments where you're just like, wait, what? Yeah. He's a comedian. That's a president. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's the president yeah. talking to a comedian on yeah. a podcast. On his on a podcast. Yeah. yeah. Really, I Not I mean, good. to me that was awesome because it really made the the medium of podcasting like real, I think. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Like if you didn't know what a podcast was, then you probably Yo, you definitely did. don't know. Yeah. yeah. I I thought that was that was pretty yeah, awesome. That's crazy. So you wanna so you wanna do a comic book? Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, so um, that's yeah. I'm working on a book now, and uh, yeah, cool. That's, um, so so is is it kind of like you know very much like that kind of kind of uh, like high contrast like black and white uh, style you were yeah, telling me about? Yeah, um, well, I'm the one I'm working. I work in black and white mainly just because mm-hmm. of uh, time, and uh, how you know yeah. it's just real time consuming. And I'm doing everything by myself. The one the book mm-hmm. I'm working on now, I'm working on another strip with uh, another friend of mine. You know Gaster Almonte? I know the name, but I don't think we've ever met. Oh, okay. I'll introduce you sometime. If, oh, cool. Yeah, I, I would love. Yeah, I'd love cool. to hang yeah, out yeah, with him yeah. if he ever wanted to do the show. T- tell oh, him. Oh hell yeah! Yeah. Oh, cool. I'm sure he'd love to do the show. Oh, excellent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
So yeah, we're we're working on a little like comic strip thing together, trying to figure that out. And um, yeah, just like besides that, it's just like more, mostly like freelance work. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, lately I've been like super busy with that stuff. So yeah. yeah. Oh, that again. That's yeah. a that's a that's a good problem. Good yeah, problem a good problem to have. to have. Yeah. Yeah. I I've got this my my big project my longest lasting project because like this i can do weekly you know stand up i can do whenever yeah. i can book shows but like i'm trying to i'm trying to write a i'm trying to write a script now when you when you do comic books do you is there a script is there like a script like yeah. a movie script something like that yeah and then you just pair that up to the the illustrations you have in your head right you're i mean you're basically like the, a comic book is like you're basically shooting a movie or a tv show uh -huh. but you're just drawing the scenes instead of shooting it on video okay that's basically it oh excellent the reason that the reason i i ask you that is because the you know i feel like i could i could get a again i feel like i could effectively storyboard the script at once in my head that i have once it's finished and then that's much easier to put together than it is to get the resources to shoot a yeah. film until, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I'm I, that's that's something that I've had in the back of my head for a while. Yeah, yeah. I also thought that I could do a comic book version of my one man show, like huh. uh, like I have this hour long storytelling show that also you know goes into some of the stuff I was saying about my dad and you know factors heavily. Yeah. Um, so I think that could be a cool companion piece. Cause you know, you that could buy, cool, yeah. yeah. Cause you know, you could buy like the album ver audio version of, right. of a show or you could have like a visual companion and then be like, if you like this, you should see it in person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and before, it's just like a, just like pictures of you, like, uh -huh. see, like panel after panel, just like lifting your arm. Yeah. <laughs> you just do the stage show. Uh -huh. Well, I was also, <laughs> I was also thinking like you could cut to like the actual, the stories I'm telling, it could cut to like those almost oh, like flashbacks okay. kind mean, of a thing. Okay. So like, I don't I'm, know why I imagine just drawing one man on stage. That would like, be hilarious. Like just panel after panel, <laughs> just the word bubbles changing. Like yeah. Yeah. And yeah. going up, gesturing to the audience. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. That, that, that would be hysterical. Yeah. I also would love to see, I saw a short film once that, that was similar to this, you know, like comedians have done like specials in black and white and they've done like right. iPhone specials. Did you ever see the movie Waking Life? It's a Richard Linklater uh, yeah, movie. Yeah, some of it. And yeah. or uh, a Scanner Darkly. So that that rotoscope. Uh, mm -hmm. No yeah, one's yeah, no yeah. one's ever done a rotoscope comedy special. Yeah, that'd be. I think that uh, would be pretty cool. That would that could be cool. Yeah, yeah. I just I I'm I'm I've, I just I really have been like I was really into animation when I was when I was a kid, and yeah. then I've just gone like all in like that's my my favorite my favorite thing. Oh, that'd be so that'd be so crazy. Yeah, if you did like if you shot a whole special and like. That weird, like rotoscoped animation look, mm -hmm. where things are kind of like wobbly. Yeah, <laughs> kind of, like kind of wobbly. Yeah, but sort of realistic. Yeah, it's like this is a little too real. Uh huh. But it's still animation. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. I love, I love, I love stuff like that. Like the, just kind of like, because it's like it feels realistic. Like to to me, anime feels very realistic, despite yeah. being a despite being a cartoon. It still feels like very much like, a, yeah, r related to. Well, the world in anime, like specifically with like that kind of storytelling, it's very much uh, uh, more about like building up the drama, right? Mm -hmm. It's not so much about like uh, whereas in in the U.S. like with comics, it's like action, 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 you know? Yeah. Whereas uh, in in Japan, a lot of those uh, comics are more like the journey to get to the end, mm -hmm. where the end is not the you know that battle at the end. Yeah. Like the whole Dragon Ball thing. You ever watch Dragon Ball as a kid growing up? Yeah. yeah. Where like the battles would take like 40 episodes. <laughs> right, <laughs> like, right. Like seven episodes is just like one guy like think wondering if he should charge up and get ready for battle. Sure. And then, like, and, then, like, and then the second episode is him charging up. And the third episode are uh, the speeches before right, the battle. Him getting in his own head about like why he's fighting. And then, exactly. Yeah. And then the battle starts right as the credits roll for the third yeah, episode. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And, and, and yeah and it's a lot like that i think like um that's what, yeah it's it's really interesting to uh see how people tell stories in different places where it's you know it's maybe in like i feel like in european comics like it's a little more romantic and more about like the art and like the language mm -hmm. and you know here it's like you know action get to the point yep what's where's the punchline where's the where's the climax sure sure you know and where's the cliffhanger whereas like in you know in manga it's like a lot about the dialogue, a lot about like how they're getting there, 
the problems they have getting there and mm-hmm. like, what they're going to do when they get there and things like that. It's, it's, it's interesting. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It just, it, it, it connects with, it connects with me uh, in a, in a way that I, I didn't think I would allow myself to feel again, yeah. <laughs> uh, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, Dude, that's that's awesome. Um, I, I got one other thing I want to I want to yeah. ask you about because you know I'm I'm getting married uh, in about a year, so the idea that I'm I'm gonna have a ki- uh, thank you thank you I uh, appreciate that. So the idea that I'm gonna have a kid is not too far off. So uh, tell me that's about crazy. so tell me about um when you knew you were gonna have a kid and when your your son uh-huh. was first born because I very much so have always lived with this kind of fear of what. Of, of having a child's impact on my life and my own ability to keep it, uh, to raise it, to raise right. a kid. So tell me, what can you tell me about what that time was like for you? Like when I found out that my wife was pregnant? Yeah. When you found out your wife was pregnant and then when, when your, when your son was born, what, what were you going through? Yeah. That, that time was a pretty crazy time in my life. Um, like it was about a, about a year after we got married, my wife became pregnant. Uh-huh. Um, I remember that. I mean, I think you'll you'll remember that moment that you find out forever. Uh, mm-hmm. I was getting ready to go to work that morning, and then my wife she you know she was like late on her period or whatever, mm-hmm. yeah. and she took the pregnancy test, and she kind of like like hobbles out of the bathroom like what's going on? You know, she's like, uh-huh. what does this mean? Like she she shows me the thing. I'm like. Uh, she's like, am I pregnant? Like it looks like you're pregnant. <laughs> like, and from there, I was like. Well, I gotta go. <laughs> Let me know if you need it. No, I'm kidding. Right. <laughs> <But> it was... <laughs> but, yeah, was... I just gotta go process this. Yeah, it's like I'll be back in a few hours. <laughs> yeah, but it was just like this weird, like surreal moment where like time just stopped. I was like, oh my god, <laughs> like I'm. There's gonna be a third person that uh-huh. I'm responsible for. Yeah, it was crazy, but. Um... Uh, that's pretty much how I found out, but like that, that whole process, it just, it just kind of happens mm-hmm. and you know how to deal with it as it happens. If that makes sense. I don't know how to explain it. Cause like, that's a, that's a big thing. Like I would always ask people like, uh-huh. what do I need to know about this? And you know, what can you tell me about this and that or whatever? And, um, there's really like, like you can't plan in advance for it, but when, yeah, you're never ready for you it. Ch- but you just know as right, you just right, know right. what to do as it ha- right. occurs. Yeah. I, like I kind of, I kind of lost what the question was. <laughs> no, you're answering you're you're answering my yeah. my question. So, yeah. so so you you find out she's she's pregnant and you're and you're you're excited. You're yeah, was yeah, this yeah. something that was so super excited. Oh great yeah. great. I mean I met I imagine. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. um and then how is and and then how did your how do you feel about your life now? I imagine positively of course mm. of course. But um how has your son enriched or changed your life? Um, I mean, it's, yeah, positively all the way, but yeah, it's, it's changed, my, not so much changed my life, but uh, added a new perspective mm-hmm. to my life. Cause like, I see a lot of, uh, myself in my son uh-huh. and I see the influences that I'm, you know, that he gets from me mm-hmm. and like just the way he views the world and, you know, things like that. It's, um, it's like, a, it's like an extra weight, but like a good weight. Right. Cause it's right. like, uh. Because now there's like meaning to everything you do. Literally everything you do, your kid sees. Uh-huh. So everything becomes meaningful and everything is like has a purpose. And it's it's interesting. Yeah. I don't know how to really explain that. <laughs> no, and, and yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm picking up the everything that you're, you think you're not saying. I'm, I'm a hearing, if that makes, yeah, if that yeah, makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so, so, so it, yeah, like everything suddenly had purpose, right? So like when he sees you doing nothing, when, when you're just like doing nothing on the sofa, it's like you're, you're I'm all, like me, I'm always thinking of like, uh, what, what am I doing? And like, what's he going to see? And you're always conscious uh-huh. of that kind of thing. And, um, yeah, it's, it's cool, man. It's, uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's a big learning process. It was a big, um, you're always learning like with me and my wife, it's, that was the biggest thing is like how, how we interact with each other. Mm-hmm. was something that I didn't think about before the kid, right? Because yeah. a lot of times, like, I think people, like myself included, before you have the kid, you're thinking, once the kid arrives, this he he's on the pedestal now, and, you know, everyone else takes the back seat. Right. Whereas, um, you know, being, being in a marriage, being in a relationship, 
it's I've learned that it's the opposite where if I like um, my relationship with my wife is going to be the greatest factor in how I'm going to be raising my kid. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm good to my wife, then I'm going to be good to my kid. Right. Whereas like she's she you know what I mean? Do you get does that make sense? Yeah. Like, like a kid like in one sense like the kid takes second place to the relationship you have with your wife. Right. In my in my case. Yeah. And I, I feel, and they're kind of symbiotic like one right. one exactly. feeds yeah, the, like one the other. Yeah, one doesn't they don't exist independently of right, each right, other. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. And long story it's like I, you kind I kind of don't know what it's like not having a kid. Now, uh -huh. you know, like you just kind of forget what that was like. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know what it's like to be single now. It's it's like a weird foreign thing to me. Yeah. yeah it's like, was I that person? I guess I was at some point, but mm -hmm. now. No, it's, yeah, yeah, that it's you just yeah. become that person. You just become dad and you're like, oh, all right. Yeah. No, that kind, <laughs> yeah. that kind of makes sense because I think about the way my life was when I first moved here and like all of the the absolute like struggles and like in like just like dread and sadness I, I had yeah. just trying to get my life established. And and now that it is, I'm just, and it's may, maybe an e eager part because I'm eager to, you know, focus on the good times. But yeah, that, that, that yeah. makes sense. I know that's a very heavy question to hit yeah, you with no, towards no, no, no. the but end that, of this. But... No, yeah, that, I mean, that's who I am, right? I'm dad. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, and, it's, it's funny because like, that's how I started comedy is like as dad. Uh -huh. And uh, the, the funniest thing is that, um, in coming up, like no, none of my friends were dads at the time. Uh -huh. And now like, as we're getting a little older, I'm, th I'm 35 now. Like a lot of my friends in comedy are having kids and mm -hmm. starting a family now. So I'm like, Oh great. Now we're all in the same place. So it's, it's uh -huh. interesting. Yeah. It's... Uh -huh. And, and your son was with you in Japan. Yeah. Did he, yeah, yeah. was there anything that he kind of reacted to that you, that you kind of had that similar thing of like, where it was kind of like interesting to see the way he was reacting to something that was probably foreign to him. Yeah, like uh, when we went to visit the temples and uh, like on the like, we hiked this, we, you know, those uh, Tory gates, mm -hmm. in Kyoto, those orange gates. We yeah. hiked that. I didn't know how he would um, behave <laughs> there uh -huh. because it's kind of a long walk. And it, sure. uh, there was a fair amount of, you know, complaining and stopping. And, sure, but, sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, was, it was cool seeing like the afterwards part. Uh -huh. or, like after the experience, he was like, oh, that was so cool. And I was like, yeah, wasn't it? That was, that was pretty neat. Uh huh. Sorry, we got into it a little bit, but sure, that was sure. pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, a, it was a good time, and he was just like super into like all the, all that like the the comics and video games. We're, you mm -hmm. know, we're both pretty and pretty big video game nerds. Awesome. So, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah was, so he'll probably need to go back when he's like a teenager oh, and he yeah, can play yeah. like M rated games. And yeah, stuff. yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah. Uh huh. Oh, that's that's great, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh man, I just, uh, I just man, I want to. I literally want to just, if I could just figure out a way to get to Japan every couple of years for the rest of my life, I'd yeah, probably be. How crazy be, would that be? That yeah. would be amazing. I was talking to the lead singer of a, a pop punk band named Alistair that I love, uh -huh. and they're super big in Japan. So they, they really? just did a tour over there, They and they're, they've they done a bunch of tours over there. So he was telling me these just great stories about being on tour in Japan with this big band over there named Ella Garden, hmm. and just like... It just sounds so great. Like I want to, I'm, I'm pro I want to start a band again with the soul, with the goal of being coming big in Japan so that I could do yeah, it there. <laughs> that'd be crazy. Yeah. yeah. And like their music scene is so, is, is so, there's so much cool stuff to discover in their, yeah. in their music scene. Like J-pop, everyone focuses on, on K-pop right yeah, now because BTS that's, are so big, think... but Japan's like, uh, punk and like uh, rock and like heavy rock scene. There's some really interesting stuff happening. I've become yeah. I've become obsessed with this band called the Winking Owl. Huh. Uh, I I kind of call it, I would describe them as like Paramore if they had more interesting guitars. Yeah. So they're sort of they're like the like more rock side of pop punk, and their lead singer she has this beautiful voice, and all of their songs are just super catchy. Like I just. It literally every time I listen to it, I discover a new song of theirs. I'm just like, holy shit! It's it's just perfect. Oh, wow. It's just a perfectly executed song. Yeah. All this stuff is on you on is on you. All their stuffs on a lot of their stuffs on YouTube. They got a new album coming out next month. I hope they sell it in the U.S. iTunes store because I'm old. I still buy music. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I haven't bought music in so it's just like Spotify, Pandora, YouTube. Yeah. That's and, how I sample. Yeah. 
if it's not on there, I'm like, I guess I'm not listening. Uh-huh. Yeah, but, well, d- I, so so when I got to Tokyo for the first time and I saw that there's a Tower Records, yeah. that oh yeah, my yeah. mind. Wasn't that so weird? i have never <laughs> been in a Tower Records before. That they was had the first... one here for a long time, and it, it was uh, gone by the time I got here. Was it? Yeah. Was it that long ago? Fuck. Yeah, or yeah. they closed. They they closed in the U.S. when I was a kid, and then I was like, "Wait, Tower Records is in Tokyo," and my fiance totally didn't get why I was so excited until I explained it to her later. And I was because I like to say everywhere we travel, I try to find like if there's like a punk scene or a or a pop yeah. punk scene. And I was like, "Hmm, I wonder if there's any if there's like a J punk scene." And there's an entire aisle labeled J punk. <laughs> really. And then, and then, like, I went in, and you, remember when you used to have to scan the barcode of a CD and put yeah, the headphones put the on? Headphones, they had that? Yeah, they had that. Oh, that's and it was, crazy. It was so fun. And then an idol group did an in-store performance. There was, like, eight people on stage. It was it was so wow. gnarly. Was it crowded in the store when they were performing? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, the, the, there was, like... It, it was, it was, it was that like just a, happened during the time you were shopping and they just, I, I was shot on stage and I, w- I was shopping this band start, this band starts performing. Suddenly all of these teenage girls in school uniforms wow. are suddenly, and they have like those light sticks that yeah, they yeah, shake yeah, yeah. and then They're do the like, the, yeah. <laughs> they, have, they have dances for the audience. Yeah. 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 That, that I think is cool. I went to uh, the robot, my 30th birthday when I was there, we went to the robot restaurant and they passed those out. And my fiance and I are doing not just the like shake it to the rhythm, but also the kind of like swooping yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, you can't see listener, but I'm making a swooping yeah. action like I'm holding up a sword. And there was some pe- uh, older Japanese guy across the table was like, how do they know? <laughs> <laughs> I like stuff like that. That's funny. Yeah. yeah, we didn't get to do the robot restaurant. That Yeah, that, I've seen pictures and uh-huh. that place looks crazy. Uh, yeah. we, we, before you leave, I can sh- I'll show you a picture yeah, that's yeah. in our in our, oh, yeah. in my living room that's from that place. Dude, this has been awesome. I feel like we could do in like another hour on Japan. We'll have to do another <laughs> hour sure, on yeah. just Japan at some Dude, point. That would be great. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I, I would yeah. love to do that. Uh, what can we? What can we plug before we get out? Um, not really. We I have a there's a show um, that I'm producing. It's called Get Down Comedy. It's at Two A Bar in the Lower East Side. Uh, that's on June seventh. Okay, that's and then and it's it. monthly. It's a monthly. Yeah. Awesome. First um, Friday of the month. Yeah. First Friday of the month. Two A Bar. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> sounds, yeah. sounds good. Well, if it changes by when, by the time I, I release this episode, let me know and I'll, yeah, yeah. I'll make sure people know. Cool. Awesome. Thanks for talking to me, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. This, this has been awesome. great. I really yeah. appreciate it. Thanks so much. This was a great conversation. Uh, thank you so much, Alex, for, for taking the time to, to chat with me. Uh, every time I get to get nostalgic about my, my time in Japan, it just really makes me think about how often I need to, uh, I want to get back there. So um, either if this podcast or my band or my stand-up can get me big in Japan, that might be my career goal for the foreseeable future. I love them. I love living in America, but if I could get big in Japan, I think that would be pretty fun also. So thank you again, Alex, and uh, I hope to see you in the future, man. I appreciate you coming over and doing the show. Uh, I also want to give out a uh, give a shout-out to my supporter on Patreon at the awesome producer level, uh, Mary Beth Mooney. Thank you so much for your support uh, of the show. I really appreciate you uh being there for me at that level on patreon if you guys want to check out the reward tiers that are available you can go to patreon.com slash awesome disaster all of the stuff i post there is not going anywhere else and i'm trying to i'm putting a lot of uh, i'm trying to put a lot of uh hard work and 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 time into making sure that that uh content oh which sounds gross saying it like that that the stuff i put there is is valuable uh to you so uh if you feel like you want to contribute or even if you can if you just want to share it i would certainly appreciate it very much and if you enjoyed the show uh and want to tell a friend we are on apple Podcasts, stitcher spotify and wherever you get your podcasts um if you want to leave a rating or a review on apple that helps other people find the show and you can add us to your favorite playlist on stitcher these are all uh little things that help the show grow organically so thank you guys very much for listening i appreciate all of you and i will see you next week between awesome and disaster Take care, everybody.